Lantau, one of the last remaining refuges of Hong Kong. One of its last truly wild places. One of its only lungs to remediate our air quality. But all of this is under threat. Development is accelerating daily, and the Hong Kong government has prioritized Lantau as the place to develop this year. I think we all think of Hong Kong, and we think of we think of Central. We think of Wan Chai. We think of the big, built-up areas. We very rarely think about the beaches and the mountains and, and the countryside. I've been walking around the hills and mountains of, of Hong Kong ever since I was a little toddler with my dad. And we go walking around everywhere and seeing it. So the inherent beauty of that space has already been imprinted on me from a, a very early age, I think. And so uh, it is a place very close to my heart that I care about. And it would be a terrible shame to see many of these places changed or uh, in the, in, for the namesake of development and economic progress. Why 其實很多香港人現在暫時都沒有這樣做的其實現在越來越多後生人或者甚至乎所有人都喜歡去那些郊野公園裡面玩啊或者放鬆一下這樣子 Currently, Lantau zoning is governed by conflicting and non-statutory strategic plans, which offer no control, regulation, or public oversight or input, but which are being used to legitimize development. 8.8% of Lantau's land, or 1,293 hectares, is not covered by any statutory planning, most notably including parts of Tong Chong and 6% of Lantau's land is covered by non-effective statutory planning, including an unenforceable outline zoning plan for the area of Lantau with the most conservation value, the South Lantau Coast. As you know, land, land is the, the biggest scarcity in Hong Kong. Um, so now when you look at like Hong Kong is pretty much, I mean, there's not much more you can do with Hong Kong. Kowloon, same thing almost, and so I, I think the next, ne next piece of meat for the developers is like, wow, you know, this whole piece of land in Lantau, it's bigger than Hong Kong, it's totally undeveloped, there's not much on there, let's go there and try to make a buck. 這一片的土地也是我們很多香港市民很希望可以繼續保留可以令我們下一代可以繼續享受這一片的自然的風景和這個舒適的環境地方很大有不同的環境有高山有風水林有風水林有海岸線的 其實這個不是第一次香港政府想發展大嶼山在1990年代初其實在發展大嶼山機場的時候政府已經開始規劃想將大嶼山變成一個新的市鎮新的經濟的發展的地方但那時候成個過程香港政府都是會比較開放比較
，就突然之間咧就將呢一個發展大嶼山嘅計劃又擺翻上台面。但係成個嘅誒過程咧，係同以前係背道而馳嘅，因為佢係直接係委任咗一個十九人嘅一個諮詢委員會，嚇個過程其實就好似係一班人大家傾傾完之後就成為一個發展嘅計劃。咁所以其實依一個係一個同以前成個規劃啊，同埋嗰個公眾參與嘅嗰個嘅程序係非常之唔一樣咯。咁我哋當然覺得。政府咁樣去胡亂或者係不民主咁樣去規劃同埋開發大嶼山，係對香港同埋我哋嘅下一代係非常之有威脅啦。It's quite interesting if you look at the、uh, the landmass of、uh, of Lang Tau. A significant part of that is Country Park, and then a next significant part of what is actually green has no status in terms of it's not a protected area, it's not under the Country Park ordinance, and it's not under the Town Planning ordinance. It's not zoned. So we see a lot of trashing of that land, and then there is little, little enforcement power of the government to do something about it.、Um, so those those areas of land are seriously at risk. And now recently, with the whole push about、uh, land supply, everybody in the community has become aware of of land supply issues, like taking a green belt here, taking a country park there. So everybody's Environment is now being discussed. 咁好可惜啦，即係誒梁振英政府上場之後咧，基本上咧佢就抹殺咗即係過去做嘅規劃嚇，就突然間咧而家咧就話要將大嶼山發展作為一個甚至係呢個珠江三角洲嘅一個中心點咁樣樣嚇。咁呢啲咁嘅睇法咧係其實係抹殺咗過去一路以嚟誒大嶼山嘅策略性嘅規劃嚇，亦都係抹殺咗大嶼山咧。啊，個環境嘅承載力我,我相信咧，即係呢一種嘅睇法咧，其實係未曾得到香港人有共識嘅。直到而家咧，政府其實好多嗰啲計劃都係好似突然間提出嚟咁樣，同埋好多係唔連貫性嘅。譬如你見到好似呢個東涌新市鎮擴展研究啦，仲有、呃、新機場啦，仲有、呃、附近有啲地方填海咧，同埋第二時佢。佢講緊有一個東大魚都會計劃啦，咁其實呢一啲佢都好似突然突然間呢幾年係突然間提出嚟咁樣，就俾人一個感覺係佢哋之間都冇連貫性嘅。咁將來其實呢啲計劃，佢哋總總計嚟講，佢哋加埋嘅影響會唔會對大嶼山嘅生態或者其他其他地方會造成啲影響咧？其實我覺得政府應該係有一個更加詳細嘅計劃，你應該點樣一次過去統合去整理呢一啲發展計劃，而而同時間我哋要平衡翻點樣保育翻我哋大嶼山嗰啲天然嘅資源。Unfortunately, some of the areas that we think are green belts or coastal wetlands or that are actually either village zones or not zoned for anything. So we have a lot of Areas that are currently green, that there might be, say, buffaloes wandering or trees growing, or a few houses, and amongst them, that potentially they can be zoned now to anything that could be full-scale commercial sites. You might say shopping malls or high-rises. I think for Hong Kong, ah, the Dayu San future, it must be a full-scale participation. 啊，首先咧最重要咧就係我哋有一個願景嘅共識先啊，因為大嶼山嘅願景咧，當然係整個香港嘅願景嘅部分啊。我哋當然明白啦嚇，即係規劃咧就係一個活嘅過程，就並不表示我哋二零零七年定咗以後都唔可以改。我哋當然可以有改變，但如果政府要提出咁嘅改變嘅時候咧，就有責任咧做一個即係策略性嘅願景嘅方案出嚟嚇，有唔同嘅選擇。係俾市民去提出意見啊！咁而家對市民嚟講咧，我覺得而家目前最重要嘅咧，就係要求政府咧係做一個策略性嘅研究，同埋有一個啊公眾參與嘅程序。特別咧係要求政府咧做一個策略性嘅環境影響評估啊！因為而家大家好擔心咧，大嶼山整個環境承載力啊，究竟我哋有啲咩選項咧嚇？即係適合到香港嘅未來，或者適合到香港人。對於即係我哋嘅城市嘅未來嘅環境質素啊、經濟發展啊等等嘅要求咧，咁呢啲都有唔同嘅選項嘅嚇。啊，我諗市民咧，如果係提出自己嘅要求，係令到政府公開一個參與嘅程序咧，係好重要嘅。其實除咗頭先講嘅一啲誒人為威脅之外咧，其實我哋而家即係嘅海豚係面對一個更加大嘅問題，就係誒有一啲現在進行緊嘅一啲工程，譬如港珠澳大橋啦，同埋將來一啲嘅填海工程。咁其實未起大橋之前，我哋已經發覺
中華百威團已經係誒個數目已經急速咁下降。咁根據我哋每一年嘅統計數字咧，由二零零三年嘅一百五十八條海豚，係而家跌到剩翻二零一二年嘅六十一條海豚，咁有大約六成嘅跌幅啊。咁其實除咗即係有之前嘅一啲人為威脅之外，而家海豚其實係要面對一個更加大嘅問題，就係、是、港珠澳大橋嘅興建咧，會帶來好多嘅噪音啦、呃，又要填海啦、呃，有好多嘅人為嘅活動喺海豚嘅生活環境裏面。啦咁所以其實對佢嚟講都個生存都好困難。咁但係誒港珠澳大橋之後，原來其實仲有其他嘅一啲發展，包括誒機管局最近誒即係希望會起依個第三條跑道，會牽涉六百五十公頃嘅填海工程。咁依個工程其實正正就喺海豚嘅一啲移動嘅嘅走廊個當中。咁所以我哋相信會帶對海豚嚟講帶來非常之大嘅影響。咁除此之外，其實政府仲係好貪心，就希望。喺大嶼山周圍嘅環境，再有更加多嘅填海，包括小河灣啦、欣澳啦、東涌啦、龍鼓灘啦依啲地方，咁全部都正正喺海豚嘅生活環境裏面、呃。其實如果我要講海豚嘅重要性，其實我有好多關於即係啲生態理論啊、呃，或者一啲書本上嘅啲知識。但我諗其實最重要就係我哋大家要明白到，呃、海豚其實都係我哋香港嘅一部分。呃、我哋知道佢哋香港原居民可能比我哋嘅祖先更加喺香港水域裏面，尤其是大嶼山水域裏面生存。其實佢哋有佢哋嘅權利，好似我哋嘅原居民或者我哋都有權利喺香港生活。我哋應該要尊重佢哋嘅權利之餘，仲應該要俾足夠嘅空間佢哋生存。誒、um, ，我諗大嶼山係香港最後一個誒寶地啦，因為佢哋誒好多香港人其實都有多誒唔同嘅回憶嘅，譬如行山啊、誒、呃、誒、呃、野餐啊、呃旅行啊、影相啊、睇雀仔啊、睇蝴蝶啊，都會喺大山裏面誒度揾，即係揾到佢哋嘅樂趣。山上面咧可能會有、呃、香港一種、呃、比較重要啲嘅雀仔，就係大草鵪啊。咁就大草鵪咧有機會喺大嶼山嘅大東山啦，同埋鳳凰山揾得到嘅。咁誒，佢哋會主要喺個山頂上面度誒誒棲息啦。咁、呃、誒，大草鵪其實喺、呃、大陸咧，好似都已經誒冇乜有嗰個記錄㗎啦。咁就可能整翻香港嘅地方咧，會有佢哋嘅誒繁殖嘅機會。咁所以大東山同埋呢個鳳凰山都係一個好重要嘅誒環境，對於個呢個大竹坑嚟講。咁就另外就係、是呃呃、香港即係、呃、大嶼山嘅個個記錄咧，可能都有成二三百種嘅雀鳥。不過就其實大東山大嶼山咧有好多地方我都未去行過，未睇過有咩雀仔嘅。The, the habitat for the cattle, both cattle and bone, but the habitat for them is losing every day. For the buffalo especially, uh, dramatically dropping. Um, we existing uh, figures showing in 2013, there's only 130 water buffalo remain in Hong Kong, and 72 is on Lantau, Puyo and Chimawan together. So this is the reason why we have to work really hard to protect the water buffalo. It's a whole... Um, pollute water source purifying system behind me. And because of them, um, we have our air and water uh, quality rebuilt. And that's why we have to protect them. And because of them, we have a better future of human living uh, environment. Because of urban, urbanite, we'll call it, concrete, urban surfaces, runoff rates are much higher in places like Hong Kong, where you get loads of rainfall too. Um, all this water has to run off somewhere and um, so it, it runs off very quickly into the seas again and into our rivers uh, and concrete doesn't help slow this down at all in fact these systems are purely designed to move water out as fast as possible and there are several problems that happen when you start to dehydrate your land from water in general 30 percent of Hong Kong's water comes from our country parks so we want to make sure we keep those areas because we don't want to be reliant totally on water coming in from China. As you see, with all the, with all the green space, with all the areas on Lantau Island, now we're still having this quality of air. So, so if, you, if, you, if, you, if you get less trees in Hong Kong, then well, how, how will this be? Looking at the, the carbon footprint of Hong Kong as a city, and Kowloon is Kowloon, there's not a lot of trees. There's some trees in Hong Kong, on Hong Kong Island, but not a lot. And we need that sort of, that, that, that green, all the trees on Lantau to help offset what we see here, all that haze, all that pollution. And I remember when I was a little kid, I reading a book. Um, I forgot what it was, but it was about future development or something, some future living. 
And there's a scene where people were wearing oxygen masks. And I remember as a kid saying to myself, I don't want that to happen. I don't, I don't want that for myself. I don't want that for my kids. For 另外的人要付出很大的代价比如污染等等的代价的话这些都是很不公平的如果你说跨代的公益就更加讲到我们如果这一代人是牺牲很多的未来的环境资源为了我们这一代人的一些短暂的利益或者短暂的发展的效益其实就是一个最基本是支撑住我自己在对于环境问题上面努力的一个看法 is the biggest threat and the only hope you know, the dolphins are suffering you know, and environment is suffering because of all this development and you know, we have to come up you know, as the only species on this planet to voice out for them I definitely feel like it's an issue that Hong Kong is waking up to so as the rest of Southeast Asia as well wakes up, indeed as the rest of the world wakes up and starts to pay attention, because uh, the stakes are very high now at the moment. You know, we would really like to see sort of more, sort of more holistic plans and so that we can see and decide for ourselves how we can um, perhaps develop Hong Kong as a whole. Now,一定要一起站出来,告诉政府,其实我们是不希望政府继续这样去各样大屿山给一些记得利益财团 香港是一个非常独特的地方,因为我们是在中国里面唯一一个有言论自由的城市,所以我们一定不可以放弃这种言论自由,因为这些言论自由就是我们组成一个公民社会的基础。如果你看回去十几年,香港这个公民社会实际